It's another cold and rainy day here in Alaska, so I like to make something in the crock pot. I'm thinking about something healthy and something that's good for me, not any garbage pizza. So if you enjoy videos like these, be sure to smash that like button and leave me a comment below and let me know. Now uh, we're going to start by adding the, uh, the frozen carrots into the crock pot, and then we're going to add the rest of the, the frozen products. Got a whole bag of frozen peas. There's going to be a lot of vegetables in this. Probably going to be more vegetables than chicken because we're going to hit it with the. We're going to hit it pretty hard with all the vegetable packets first. Oh wow, this one. This one's easy open. Check that out. Way to go, bird's eye. Now that's the rice cauliflower mix, and that looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm probably not even going to have enough room for the cabbage. Then we're going to toss in the green beans, and I have no idea what the hell that is. That was just in there. What the hell is that? Perfect pairing tip for veggies, sauce, and saute. Okay, this is garlic butter green beans. The mystery product is garlic butter. I had no idea. It's okay. It's going in. But at first, I was kind of scared. I think I'm going to carefully chop up these green beans and then put them back in there. They're kind of big. Well, this just about does it. I didn't get every single one, but as you can see, I got the majority of them, and I think that's going to make a big difference instead of having those big, long green beans like everywhere in there. The one fun thing about making a soup or any crock pot recipe is just that you get to take your time and relax, and you get to put a lot of love in there. And that's what really makes it taste good, in my opinion. So we're going to add the beans. No, we're not. I'm going to drain a little bit of that off. So I wasn't a huge fan of the gelatinous juice that was in the beans. And I decided to put them in a little strainer. And I just rinsed them off in the sink. So now we're just going to add those on in there. <laughs> then we can start on the uh, getting some of the celery going. Now I am going to use a lot of celery. So I'm probably just going to use... This whole piece here. Ta -da. I'm gonna go rinse these off real quick. They're pretty dirty. Now one thing about produce here in Alaska is you really never know what you're gonna get and quite often you don't know where this stuff comes from. I mean unless you really read closely or you know pay attention. At times we're just lucky to get anything at all because everything's got to get shipped up here. Now we do grow some vegetables here locally and they call it Alaska grown, go figure, it's Alaska. But those vegetables are by far the better vegetables out of all the ones you can get up here. And sometimes they're available and other times they're just not available. So like I said, we get what we can at whatever time we can. But the tomatoes up here taste like candy. They're, they are amazing. I mean, they're super sugary, sweet tasting goodness. And yeah, you can eat them like an apple. This is organic market side celery hearts. Wash before eating. USDA organic. So that's a good thing. Now, where's it from? It says Bentonville, Arkansas, product of the United States. That doesn't tell me a lot. Because when they say product of the United States, it, it doesn't really mean anything. It just means the United States could have literally just bought it from somebody and then called it their product because now they paid for it. So you could buy stuff from Canada, you could buy stuff from Japan or China or even Mexico. And quite often that's where the main source of our produce comes from. It's from Mexico and Southern California. Uh, they both work ra rather hand in hand. So this crock pot is just about overflowing and we're not going to do the cabbage. We're going to figure out something else to do with the cabbage. But now I need to start working on the chicken, getting the chicken all set up and, and put away. So let's see if I can safely get the bird out of here. I'm going to dump it into the pan first. That way the juices all go in the pan. That's a good idea. That's almost like I was thinking about what I was doing there for a second, which is kind of rare. Just let everything drip out. The wings are kind of whatever, so we're going to rip those suckers off right now. But one thing me and my wife love, and that's just digging right into one of these birds and just destroying it. I mean, me and her, we'd 
we pretty much fight over the Costco chickens and my kids now that they're growing up and they, they finally start appreciating it. But yeah, the fun part about getting rotisserie chicken is just stripping all the meat and you know, making sure you don't have any bones in what you're going to put in the soup. I mean, you definitely want to get every bit of the chicken breast into the soup. I mean, that's the, that's the best part of the chicken uh, for you to consume. Now the dark meat, it's good. And the reason it's good is because it's got fat. It's got a lot of fat in it. And yeah, that's where a lot of the juices kind of tend to tend to hang out. And my cats are in the other room and they sound like they're being tortured and they're not. They're just not used to being in the bedroom. Because if I had them in here right now, they'd be all up in this. Uh, trying to tell me how to do this and I'm doing it wrong. And the older of the two cats would be in here trying to chew my arm off. So alright, that chicken is officially done. And this is going to be amazing when it's done. And the nice part about this recipe is it only takes about two hours in the crock pot for everything to combine. And pretty much the longest part of it all was just the preparation. You know, getting everything added to the crock pot, getting everything diced up that needs to be diced up, adding your seasonings. And then, of course, don't forget you got to do your chicken broth. So you got to boil that water and wait for a while. And what I usually do is I, I, I let it sit and boil, then I let it turn it down to a simmer. And I start putting that, I just take the ladle straight over to the crock pot back and forth. It's a super efficient and easy way to make a yummy family meal. So now it's just going to be the same process for the other bird. We're going to get it chopped up and add it on in. Going to get some water in the pan and get that rolling. Then we're going to start adding the broth. So now we're all done with the chicken carcass. We're just going to add some water and get her on the stove while I do the rest. All right, so now for the fun part, that's putting in the spices, getting everything ready to go. Just about one tablespoon of cayenne pepper. And we're going to give it a, about another tablespoon. Oh, maybe a little extra. Maybe we'll put some of that back. Crushed red pepper flakes. Two rough tablespoons of garlic. And this is, and I like a lot of garlic, so this, this will be amazing when it's done. Now we're going to do a couple tablespoons of Monterey chicken seasoning. This adds a nice flavor. And I'm probably going to use about four tablespoons of minced onions because I forgot to buy an onion at the store. So we're just going to have to use what we have here. Last but not least, that paprika. That'll give it that nice, nice smoky flavor at the end. All right. Now all we have to do is just get this over in the heating element and sit there and wait for the uh, broth to finish up. And then we just start adding the broth. And then let everything cook for about two hours and then it's ready to go. So I've had this broth cooking for oh, a good couple of hours now. I've been busy working on some other things. So the water has evaporated a little bit. So we're just going to add a couple cups of water, bring it up to the rivets. Then we're going to let it simmer some more and then we're going to come back and we're just going to skim the uh the yuck off the top so here's a stupid little trick i have to getting the broth out of there without getting all the other crap in it just set that on top and poof, there's your broth right there you don't have to worry about getting no bones and nothing and this is a little bit of a slow process and i'm okay with that you know making good food takes a little bit of time ladle on this broth and fill it up as much as we can and if it gets down too low, it's no big deal. We just add a little bit more water and let it cook a little longer and make some more broth for later. I mean, the key to making good food for the family is just take your time. I mean, choose your ingredients wisely and don't go broke in the process. We're not making a lasagna here. So now we just set the crock pot for two hours and then we're going to go ahead and add some more water back into our chicken stock and let that cook down for a little while. Then we're going to come back in about a half an hour and give everything in here a good stir and possibly add some more chicken broth. The fresh organic celery, the carrots, uh, even the beans give it a real nice flavor. The chicken is super soft, super tender, but then again, of course, it's rotisserie chicken. The rice, cauliflower, I think it was, that I put in there, it's barely noticeable in here. I 
can't see it, but I'm guessing the garlic butter did help a little bit with the flavor. Beautiful golden color. The peas are really bright, and they have a really lovely fresh taste to them. Uh, those are the little tiny petite baby peas, and those are my favorite. The big ones get a little bit mushy. This is a great low calorie, low carb meal. I mean, it's perfect for what I'm doing right now. I think my biggest problem before I started fasting and eating a healthier diet was I used to use the excuse that it's too expensive to go out and buy vegetables and go out and buy good food and healthy food, especially here in Alaska. I know a lot of people have said that and I've heard a lot of people say that. But when you really start to change your lifestyle, you're actually spending a lot less money uh, because you're eating less. You're eating better food. Eat it at a higher frequency if you want to, but when it's a healthier food and it's a better for you type food, it fills you up quicker and you're eating a lot less. So you're not spending a lot of money. Uh, this meal here was incredibly cheap. I mean, went to Walmart, got some good deals on rollbacks. I'm not worried about feeding the kids. And normally when the kids are home, I'd make a crock pot meal similar to this. It's just a lot less spicy and it would feed everybody for the entire week so i just want to thank everybody for sticking around till the end the total calories for the crock pot recipe is 5140 calories now my crock pot it holds about 10 servings that's about 514 calories per serving that's not bad at all so if you found today's video entertaining or informative please smash that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one